In this tutorial, I am going to show you how you can combine the rotate function in P5.js with the for loop. So if you haven't watched the tutorial on rotate and translate, this is the time to do so. I will link the video here. Um, once you have watched that video, you can come back and watch this one. So what I wanted to sort of address is how the rotate function as well as the translate function are, are function that are additive. So what do I mean by additive? Here, um, if I draw a rectangle and I'm going to say my rectangle is going to be 0, 0, 50, 50, and I'm going to hit play. Um, no surprise here, right? So uh, a rectangle on the upper left. If I put a translate right before the rectangle, and if I say 50, 50 to translate, translate the, the 0, 0 orientation of the canvas from, from the upper left-hand side corner to 50, 50. If I hit play, the whole rectangle is going to shift and go down by 50 50 right what happens if i create another translate function that again say 50 50. Um, if i hit play it's going to move the rectangle to 100 100 right if i do minus 50 50 it's going to bring it all the way back and the reason for that is because transla the translate function is additive. So it's not going to say, you know, like on line 9, forget what line 8 said. Instead, it's going to do things in addition to what, you know, what, what's being instructed in the translate in line 8. Okay, so um, with this in mind, knowing that translate is additive, Let's take a look at rotate. Um, so we are actually going to use the degree mode here. We're going to say ingo mode degrees. And here I am going to say rotate. We're going to rotate 45 degree first. Oh, it's, it's a little off-centered. Oh, so, so with rotate, it's always a good idea to use it in combination with translate, right? Because otherwise, it's just very hard to um, grapple where, where your rotation um, pivot point is. So I'm going to say width divided by 2, height divided by 2, and I'm going to translate into the center of the canvas here. OK, so, so when I do that, um, uh, the anchor point for our rectangle is still on, the, on its own upper left corner, but the zero zero of our canvas has shifted to the center of the canvas, and now the rectangle is rotating along the center. So if I add another rotate here, it's going to rotate the whole thing to 90 degree. If I add another rotate here, it's going to rotate it to another degree. Okay, so, so if I want to um, create a sequence of um, rectangle that's going to each rotate a little bit at a time to kind of create this um, this kind of like um, like sequence of arrangement I needed to copy and paste this a couple of different times right and does that remind you of for loop? <laughs> it does for me. Um, so, so we can utilize for loop to actually repeat this action, right? So I'm going to delete everything below translate and I'm going to actually um, try to create a for loop here and it's going to say for let i equals to zero, i smaller than Five, I plus plus, and this time I'm actually I think I want to draw a circle of a ring of circles. That's what I want to do. A ring of circles. So I'm going to say um, ellipse. It's going to start at zero zero. We'll have, probably have to shift that in a sec. 
2020. And let's hit play first. Um, I'm a fan of doing a little bit and just hitting play. And so um, all the ellipses are now um, right at the center, drawing right on top of each other, right? So let's actually use rotate to start offsetting them. Here I'm going to rotate and I'm going to do 30 degrees. Um, so if I hit play here, the circles have all rotated, uh, but they're still overlapping on top of each other. So this is where we need to start offsetting the X and Y value of the circle from the center of the canvas. So if I say 50-50 here, for instance, we're going to see every single circle offsetting from the center of the canvas and rotating 30 degrees at a time. I'm going to actually put in a more interesting color here. I'm going to do 220 to 220, zero, and fill is going to be 0, 200, 200, and I'm going to do no stroke. And I'm going to also add more circles. <laughs> so it's going to come in full circle. So, so what, and, and obviously it's good practice to put, put push and pop before and after this because otherwise um, we, you know, drawing other shape might start to get confusing. So, so okay, this is great. Um, I wanted to use this opportunity to, to basically demonstrate to you, um, you know, like the differences between putting the rotate function in this case within the for loop versus outside of the for loop. Um, when we put it inside the for loop, this has been executed 12 times, right? And and this 12 times would each sort of, you know, like add 30 degrees onto the rotation of the circle. If I put this rotation outside of the for loop, it is going to rotate all 12 um, circles at once, right? Because, because the rotation is only applied to um, whatever that comes after it. And, and when you enter that for loop, it's gonna draw all the little circles, you know, like individually, but uh, within that for loop and the rotation only affects them as a whole. So, so knowing the differences between putting translate or rotate inside the for loop versus the outside is going to make a big difference in terms of how you might be able to design a pattern.